Naomi Campbell introed me, but she said my name wrong. And she said, tonight performing, we have FK2 Twigs. And I was like, what? But I was like, I'll take it. It's Naomi, she can call me what she likes. Hi, British Vogue, I'm FK Twigs, and this is my life in looks. So this is my LP1 artwork. It was shot in Jessie Kander's bedroom and we've been working a lot together at the time. I said to Jessie that I really wanted there to be red in the album artwork. When you make music, it's like you put all of your experiences into the album, trauma and the love and the relationships with the whole of your life. So how do you show that on the face? Jessie just took the conversations that we'd had and elevated it to a whole nother level. Everything we'd spoken about, this feeling of the story before, this feeling that an event had happened. A bit deer in the headlights, but also ready to take control of the situation. To this day, I think it's one of the most incredibly strong album artworks of the past decade. And we were kids, like we were just little kids. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is from my first Mercury nomination and I'm wearing Balenciaga. At the time I'd actually been experimenting with bleaching my eyebrows and I'd had an accident and I'd burnt off all of the skin on my forehead. So my hairstylist Sawichi and I came up with this idea that I would have beads hanging really low to cover it up so I could just be gorgy from here down. Actually, I think some of the greatest fashion moments come from a mishap or a mistake and it turns into a happy accident. It's good that I burnt off my eyebrows. This picture is from my first self-directed music video called Pendulum and I'm wearing Erez flesh underwear and my own hair. At the time I'd been really into Shibari and going to a lot of underground clubs in Vauxhall. My representation of my emotion and my human complications with my hair and so I bound myself in my own hair but the interesting thing is is when I was shooting the video I could only be suspended for seven minutes at a time because if you're suspended for longer than that there's risk that you can cut the circulation from your limbs and you can have numbness in your limbs for up to a year so it was a pretty techers shoot but it was really fun and it was the first time I realized that I could direct and just how much I loved taking control of my own creativity and my art. This was the red carpet look for my first Brit Award nomination. I remember it was around this time in my career that I really started to look into the archives of fashion. I guess want to be inspired by what had come before in my art. So the makeup here is a reference from Galliano. Spring, summer 96. In the show, the girls had amazing clay sculptural hair and that was really beautiful and inspiring. I remember feeling that I wanted to be very strong and make a statement on the carpet. This jacket is the same jacket that I wore for my Glass and Patron music video in the Vogue scene. So I do this move where I like swipe the jacket across and, and it's the same one. This was actually a really amazing look. It is Alexander McQueen's Spring 2008. I wore this to open his huge exhibition and I performed on stage. It was just such a huge honor. At that point, I'd become very close with Sarah Burton during my first tour Congregata because she'd allowed me to go through the archives of McQueen and wear some of the outfits on stage. I just learned to love making a statement and I just realized how fun it could be to wear something that some people might love and some people might hate. It was really amazing to be able to reinterpret the designer's looks but through my lens. So this is a performance that I did. It was Coachella. And this is a K to Z piece. I remember I started doing these kind of big Susie and the Banshee style eyebrows on stage. And in these early years, I was not very concerned with looking attractive at all. You know, I really didn't care. I just wanted to get across my inner fire and how much tenacity I had as a young artist. So I'd always use my body so much when I was performing and the light would shine through and being able to work with these silhouettes on stage was really exciting and I learned a lot about the power of dress. So this next look is my Glastonbury performance. I was working with Aaron Sillis, who'd choreographed the whole performance, and there were so many different dancers. The routines were really intense. I was going 
from hip hop to commercial dancing to contemporary to voguing and I needed something that could incorporate all of the genres of music movement that I wanted to do. And there was only one person that I felt could really nail it and that was my mum. And so I asked my mum to make my outfit for me. Some of the moves were very balletic as well. So I had these little Nike sort of contemporary ballet pumps. And it's funny actually working with my mum because she'd always be like, are you safe? Is anything going to fall out? It was really fun going to fittings with her and coming back and reporting how it had worked in the rehearsals. So this is my Melissa artwork shot by Matthew Stone, who has been a very long collaborator of mine. Throughout the years, I've gone back to Matthew. I love the way he shoots. He has a real velvety touch and he's an absolute perfectionist like I am. So we work well together. So this next look, is from my Fuck Sleep music video with ASAP Rocky, styled by the amazing Matthew Josephs. The jacket I'm wearing here is Dior by Galliano. But this whole video, the looks are so iconic. Kabuki did my makeup. Nazir made me a custom pole dancing outfit. Fico Matter made me a dress. I had the wash and go Stephen Jones headpiece. The Dior latex orchid headpiece. Do you know what's so amazing about videos like this is when you can source pieces from the runway or from a look and they're all around the world and when they come together you manage to put together pieces from the original runway as a archivist that's what I'm obsessed with. This is from my Magdalene tour and it's one of my favorite looks designed by Ed Marla. Every aspect of this tour was thought about down to the absolute T within the embroidery of the corset here. You have spike nard, roses, oils and herbs that Mary Magdalene used to heal people. This next look is one of my personal faves because it's one of my archive pieces, Dior 97. And again, this is one of those instances where you manage to get all of the looks from the piece, but they're all from different parts of the world, so the top and the trousers. And then I found the bag in America and I was like, I have to get that. But then when we were in the makeup chair, I actually was so scared because I can't remember where she is. Like this look, you know those things people like say they go to sleep and they think, where's my birth certificate? That's what I <laughs> just had with this. I'm like, where is she? So as soon as I leave this, I'm gonna go um, home and hunt her out. This next look was for the Grammys and it was designed by Ed Marla and I'd been away touring and I hadn't seen him so he turned up with the dress fully made we hadn't had a fitting there's like this beautiful lace catsuit that goes underneath the dress so it's all this like applique like all over my body but it had no stretch in it so I basically couldn't lift my arms or walk at all so it's really funny because when you see me on the carpet I'm just like <laughs> like this because I couldn't move in it but it, it was worth it oh this one's a fun one. So this is when I went to the CSM graduate show and I invited Madonna because she was in town for a few days. And I was like, do you want to come to something fun with me? She really loved the show. I was supporting my good friend Yaz Whitlock. This dress I'm wearing is by Freya from Fanny Twelves. This is one of my favorite bags. It's a coconut shell and it's by Nazia Handmade. Oh, and the Cardi. I've had this little shrug. I've had that since I was 14. Oh, I love this. When I walked in the Miu Miu show, it really changed me because I was with Muchia and we were doing the fitting and I had cho two choices of outfits. And one was this bondage, like belly out knickers, this big black belt. And it was a lot more me. And Muchia looked at it and, and she said, no, I want you to wear the, the shirt with the sweater. And for a moment, I was a little bit disappointed. So I was like, oh, I really wanted to wear like the Lara Croft bondage outfit. But when I saw myself in these pictures, I was like, wow, it's amazing when something fits so well and the cut is sublime. You don't need anything. You don't need makeup. You don't need hair. You just have this incredible silhouette. I never thought being so dinky, I'd ever walk in a fashion show, let alone Miu Miu. And to close the show was definitely a huge honor. So this next look, I went to the British Fashion Awards with Rick Owens and Montclair. Super fab look, but the thing that I love the most about this picture is actually my makeup. If you have an idea, it's always from like the center of your forehead and like this moment of clarity that I've spoken about a lot. Every time I went out, I just wanted to have this burst somehow. Actually, the little dot in the middle, it's reflective. So when the flash went off, I wanted it to look like I was having like a beam like an idea. 
This next look was from when I went to the 2023 Met Gala with John Galliano for Margiela. It's an archival piece from 2017. You can see how walking in the Miu Miu and then this sort of correlates. For me, it's having that confidence that less can be more. When I did my fitting with Galliano, I could have cried. The attention to detail that he has, every single feather, he came in and he like, with his nail, was getting it absolutely perfect. And I was like trying to stand and he was like, okay, so it's good. Like when you do like a twist, you see the sheen down the, the side of the satin of the dress. It felt like a really strong moment for me. And I felt like I arrived into myself in a way. This next look is for my performance at Vogue World just last year. It's by Laquan Smith and actually I changed my outfit hours before the show and all of the dancers outfits. It was too busy. I had this really amazing like white catsuit on and all of the dancers, it was like punk themed. So they all had kilts and hair and colors and i looked at the rehearsal video and i just was like i can't we'd worked so hard on the tightness of the routine that well pretty much on the day i was like i want to wear black and i want it to be really graphic and really strong and i was performing with rambert which was such a huge honor and i just wanted us all to feel like we were together this is my first vogue cover i'm wearing Lueve. to be on chioma's cover is such a huge honour. This year I'm definitely trying to take more stock of my accolades and give myself a pat on the back just to stop and be like yeah that was that was good I can take a moment and this is a real mi milestone. Oh yeah I actually did that after the shoot because I took all my friends out for a big curry so I was conscious. Even then even after the shoot I was like I'm gonna remember this. I'm FK Twigs and this has been my life in looks. I've really enjoyed it and I hope that you have as well.